Greetings. So I am back at it, obviously. These are in, don't look too close to the welds. And so now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull the seals. Uh, I'm not gonna worry too much about how much grease is in there. Not worrying about these right now. Uh, and then I am going to measure back to find the bushing. I think there's a nylon bushing somewhere back in here. I wanna figure out how deep in that goes and that's gonna give me a don't cut before that amount. Uh, and then hopefully an inch inside of that. So let's say the bushing goes to about here. I'm gonna then go at least an inch here, if not more, so that the sleeve does not butt up against the bushing. I'm also planning on having my cut as close as I can to this bracket so that the sleeve will sit in this section, drill a few holes to spot weld through, and then weld around. One, two, three, four. That's the plan for today. Uh, cutting out, obviously, the two inches, boom, boom, boom. Two inches, boom, 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 and go from there. Oh. This is probably overkill, but you got the job done. All right, I simplified my life. I told you guys I learned on the way. Um, rather than hunting for the bushing, uh, so the needle bearings are in each uh, flush in there. I just measured the, the uh, inserted part of the control arm um, of the top and bottom one. And they're six and a quarter to about six and a half inches deep. So this is a six inch ruler with an extra inch on that end. So that's seven plus gets me to there, which means ends there if I take two inches out as close as possible to here and then sleeve it, I'm gonna be golden. So that is the plan. I'm gonna cut as close as I can to this bracket without cutting into this weld, um, probably a quarter inch over, take out two inches, you know, roughly to there, maybe to there, weld it up and proceed. Okay, this bracket, still don't know what it does. I haven't bothered to look it up in my manual, uh, but I'm gonna put it back. So first thing I'm gonna do is make sure I scribe a line straight across. So I'm gonna know where this leading edge is marked, all right? Second thing is I need to know its distance from this bracket, because as it gets moved this way, I need it to slide back. So if you look, it is exactly two and seven eighths on the 28 there. So two and seven eighths from here over. So when I cut out the two inches, slide this over, I measure back two and seven eighths. I've got the line still scribed, move it over, clamp it in place, weld it in. It's only held in with like a quarter inch tack here, here and here. So, and then on the bottom. So I don't imagine it is something that's like holding the body to the uh, chassis or something like that. <laughs> so I'm gonna be good. Uh, I'm going to make the same measurements on the other side. Uh, I am noting these things on my notepad and uh, we'll go from there. So on this side we have both the steering box mount and we have this little, I don't know what to call it. See it there. It's just held in place. Looks like two tack welds in the middle. Pretty sure I'm going to be able to air chisel that off, which would be great. So uh, all my measurements, by the way, are going to be in Imperial. This is exactly two and a half inches. Again, I'm gonna scribe a line so I know where to mark that. And to the box itself is one line, five and three eighths. So five and three eighths to the steering box, two and a half to this little uh, pad. So uh, when they are removed and slid over, I will make sure that they are in the right spot. I am curious how far over I'm gonna be able to make this thing go and have it still be functional. Like if I cut two inches out, this thing is overlapping with that. So I'm imagining this is gonna be over about an inch and a half rather than two inches. It's gonna get close, but not on top of this, <laughs> um, which 
is what it is. Uh, and in doing so, there might be a slight angle to the drive uh, to the steering column, normally like this. It might be, you know, over the three foot length of it or whatever, if it's off by half an inch, there's enough play. And uh, I'll be able to make some adjustments because I got to fix the steering uh, with a new uh, pitman arm anyway. So again, there's always going to be some refinement and adjustment and occasionally compromise. First cut done, getting ready to do the second cut using blue tape, one inch blue tape, which is by the way, about seven eighths of an inch. Always double check. So there's a little bit of gap. That is two inches. Again, if I cut just outside that, I'm removing a little bit more than two inches because it's two inches plus the cut. Okay. And when that happens, what you end up with is the gap that you need to sleeve it, which I'm going to be doing with that. Uh, I was going to use a Sawzall, but I don't have any, uh, metal cutting sawzall blades. I've also taken the guard off because it's gonna help me put a brand new disc again for every new cut. Um, also one other important measurement uh, that I didn't mention earlier, the distance from this bracket edge to this edge is on mine, eight and five sixteenths. Uh, so obviously when I'm done and I put the sleeves in and I slide it over, I get it to six and five sixteenths and I will have removed two inches going to do the other side. Uh, I'll bring you back when I'm ready to uh, weld in some pieces. Sleeves are in and uh, if you look I put in a plug weld. I've got a couple holes. There's another one on this side. There's two for this one. Partly just to hold the sleeve in place so that when I slide that piece on it's not going to uh, move on me. I've got a few holes there. You can see one through the other side same there with the idea that uh, they're going to help add a little bit of strength but also they're just going to make sure everything is uh, not moving around when i do the actual welding i am doing one entire side i have not cut that side yet partly to give my welder a break partly to give me a little bit of variety you can do what you need to all right one side's done nothing over here yet but one side's done um Please don't give me crap about my welds. They're an issue. I understand that, but I am confident that they are strong enough. If you look right here, I'm supposed to get to six and five sixteenths. Boom. And then down here, easier to see with that white background. Where is it? Six and like three eighths. So maybe a sixteenth of an inch off. That's more accurate than I was expecting to be. And uh, I'm probably more amazed than you guys are. Um, if you're amazed at all. So done. That side's next. Not going to film it either. When I get it all bundled back up into a much smaller beam, I'll show it to you. But <laughs> you can see how much shorter that compared to all of that. Progress, ugly welds. Here it is. Looks like a damn toy, so tiny. I'm feeling good about the welds. Uh, again, you wanna look close and tell me I suck, um, that's fine. But uh, I'm feeling like I got some good penetration, got some good heat in there, uh, spots that I needed to, I went over it again. Um, anyway, did a good job, I think. I uh, got the steering bracket, steering box bracket back on. I was able to weld on both sides up in here. So I feel confident that that's going to be in there. It was only on the outside in the factory. Um, got this thing on. Still don't know what it is. I'll report in the next episode. Gave the thing a little bit of a scrub down. Uh, I'm not going to have it powder coated. Uh, I've got a bunch of matte enamel uh, paint left over that uh, I'm going to use. But yeah, not sure what else to say. Uh, up next is reassembly and then installation. Reassembly, I'm gonna pull the needle bearings and clean them. I've got seals uh, on order at Wolfsburg West. I'm fortunate enough, I live about uh, 15 miles from there. So I'm just gonna do pickup tomorrow and get those. Um, 
yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm going to pull it apart, or not pull it apart, uh, clean the whole thing, uh, paint it up, and then pull the other one and uh, start working on merging the two. Uh, that is the one thing that's given me confidence to try this project, and I do recommend it. I'm not cutting up the beam that's on the car, right? Car's still there, still driving. So if this ends up not fitting or something's wrong and I'm not feeling confident with it, if there's an issue, uh, I'm gonna yank it and I'll put the other one in. I'm never getting rid of the other one because it's not worth anything. So, uh, you know, worst case scenario, it's gonna cost me a couple hundred bucks in adjusters, hundred bucks for the beam, what, 300 bucks? and some time. And I know I could have bought one of these for 900 or a thousand and have it be like super fancy and perfect from Arcwell. They do beautiful work, but uh, I'd rather save myself the 600 and have a project. That's why I, I enjoy doing this stuff. So anyway, that's it for this episode. Moving on to reassembly.